Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and here is a historical romance vlog. So Jess from Peace Love Books reached out to me and asked me to collaborate with her and a few other booktubers to read some historical romances together. We're not all reading the same historical romances, it's just gonna be each of us having a vlog of reading historicals which will be super fun because i know a lot of us in our 2024 goals we're wanting to read more historicals myself included so i'm excited about this i've already started my first book for this vlog so i started kit mcbride gets a wife i think that's the title of it i saw kelly from kelly reynolds reads i'll link her down below i love her okay um i saw that she had a, this book and its sequel on her favorites of 2023 and i was like ooh, okay let's do it i don't read a lot of american set historicals and i'm thoroughly enjoying this one i will say i'm about 50 percent of the way through this one a heroine of the story she is irish and she experienced some trauma back home like a man used her in the worst way possible and she decides to go to america to maybe start a new fresh life and she's gonna take this job in america but the job is not really what it seems her employer is the absolute worst <laughs> her employer turns out to be destitute and can't pay the heroine like anything and she is basically stuck with her has nowhere else to go her employer decides to fulfill an advertisement for a mail order bride out in the country in the united states that's how they get to this very small ranch country town i don't know remember what state it is but it's in the country okay he's a cowboy kit mcbride is a cowboy the mcbride brothers are like very well known as being like the very ruggedly handsome men in this town okay there's not a lot of women in this town so a few of the guys have decided to get mail order brides anyway long story short i don't want to like spoil it too much but this is a romance between kit mcbride one of the brothers and our heroine even though she did not fulfill the advertisement her boss did so it's like some mistaken identity stuff going on um, i'm really liking it i do like these characters especially kit's youngest sister i think she's funny she reminds me kind of of scout from to kill mockingbird like wants to stick her nose in everyone's business <laughs> and she really wants a wife for her brothers because uh she's sick of doing all the chores she's sick of doing all the washing and the cleaning and so she's like i need my brothers to find a wife because i'm sick of this <laughs> i feel really bad for a heroine she's experienced like like bad thing after bad thing she's had some rotten luck okay so i really feel for her um and kit seems like so sweet so far um i can't wait to read more about this i'm like exactly 50 percent of the way through the audiobook i listened to quite a bunch of it today and right now i stopped at like a caretaking scene she got injured and he's taking care of her and y'all know i'm a sucker for that so yes i also have the second one checked out on libby so if this one works out really well i already have book two lined up so i might just read that one and then i do have another sitting in my libby to listen to but i don't remember the title currently um but i'll let you know if i pick that one up um but i am currently also reading a historical but i'm not really going to mention it in this video but i am reading a historical also this is tender as the storm by johanna lindsay and this is my first johanna lindsay book with this iconic cover okay i luckily got one without the sticker over his butt i know a lot of people get the sticker over his butt um but i actually got this in a mystery box back in like 2020 off of ebay and i just about cried because i found this very coveted edition i'm mentioning that i'm reading this right now um because this one's also set in america it's an american historical and before i pick this one up because i started this one a few days ago um i had never really read a american historical they don't really appeal to me as much as the ones set in london or england or scotland because like there's like a fantasy element there they exist in a world that i am not familiar with i am not familiar with those countries at all um so i don't really pick up american ones but i wanted to pick up my first johanna lindsay book and i didn't know this one was set in america so i just picked it up but i'm actually reading this one for my channel members so every single month i pick out a kind of like stunning looking historical and i read it and i do a dedicated vlog over that historical um so the vlog for this one will be out for my channel members in i think a week as of posting this video this one's interesting too because it's also a mail order bride so i'm kind of relating it into in my brain to the book that i'm currently listening to um so yeah both of these american historicals are mail order brides but i do want to mention i'm also reading a historical but i'm not going to be mentioning it in 
this video. You can go check out my members dedicated video whenever that one comes out. So yeah, I just wanted to open up this vlog, start this vlog for y'all. And I'm excited to read some historicals because I've definitely been in the historical mood and I'm excited to see what all my friends pick up as well. I finished Kit McBride Gets a Wife and I really, really liked this one. I wasn't really know what to expect going into this because it's an American historical, which I think I've said before, haven't read many of those. I think this might be my first one. I'm not sure, honestly, but this was a very enjoyable read. I definitely would consider picking up the next one. The heroine of this story, I really enjoyed her as a character and <laughs> Kit's younger sister was hilarious. And I love how sweet and caring Kit was. There was a lot of caretaking scenes in here because the heroine does break her leg, like falling into a rabbit hole. And so I really love that. I love my caretaking scenes. I don't want to spoil anything, but I did enjoy the ending and how that was handled with the kind of like mistaken identity trope. I feel like the turnaround for everyone figuring out what's going on was very quick and like very mature. <laughs> very mature to me. I will say though, I think this book is a perfect representation that a good romance book doesn't need steam in it. I'm someone who doesn't need steam. I, I'm definitely getting in my moods. Okay. You, I'm going to pick up a just a cane when I'm in that mood. Okay. Like I am definitely in those moods when I'm in those moods, but I don't necessarily need steam in every single romance book that I read. I think there's a quality in romance books that doesn't have any steam in it that kind of feeds my imaginative soul <laughs> in a way. I will say though that there are those romance books that leaves you with quote unquote like blue balls where you like, you think it's gonna be so hot and then the door closes and you're like all that tension for nothing. Like those are books where I'm like, okay, that's teasing. I don't think that's fair. <laughs> I feel like this book though was super sweet in that. Like I think all you saw on page was them kissing and I loved that. Like it was very sweet. And I, I thoroughly enjoyed my time reading this. So um, if you want an American historical that is really good, like I really enjoyed this one, um, I totally recommend picking this one up and I definitely look forward to reading the next one. I have a few holds on Libby when it comes to historicals and I don't know which one to pick up yet. I can't remember the titles for the life of me, um, but I'll let you know when I get started in my next one. Um, but right now I'm going to be taking some book Instagram pictures. I got this awesome set. I saw an ad on Instagram and I caved, okay? I got this set of um, kind of like mini cardboard backdrops for my pictures for Instagram that have worked out amazingly well so far. I also bought them for another account that I create on Instagram um, when it comes to like my gluten-free baking and stuff. I've been using it for that and it works so well. And so I'm gonna be taking some pictures and kind of like experimenting with that. Um, there's a new release coming out tomorrow that I really wanna take a really good picture for. I have a vision in my brain. Um, so I definitely want to take some pictures for that and um, just some other other things that I'm excited to take pictures of. I have a pretty good setup. I have all my light boxes and ring light. I got a new ring light the other day. Um, so I am all set. <laughs> and uh, my broken computer, my computer broke a few days ago, um, comes in the mail tomorrow. So I feel so naked without it. Like I would have been editing this vlog already if I had my computer. I haven't had it for almost a week and I'm like chopping at the bit to get it back. <laughs> I feel so naked without it. So I get that tomorrow, so I'm really excited. But um, yeah, in the meantime, I'm going to be picking out a new historical audiobook and um, taking some bookstagram pictures. It's a few days later and I actually have decided to pick up book number two in the series. Um, this is Marrying Off Morgan McBride by Amy Berry. And uh, this one, I'm only like an hour and a half into the audiobook. It is so funny, like Junebug, which is the younger sister of all these men, cracks me up so much. <laughs> so she sends out an advertisement like she did with Kit in book number one to find a wife for her older brother, Morgan, because he really wants to leave their ranch. And she's like, oh no, if I find him a wife, he's gonna wanna stay. And she really wants to find someone who can cook because she's sick of cooking. She's like 14 years old. She's like, I don't wanna cook for these men anymore. I need to find a, a wife for these guys that'll cook. And so her main like advertisement is like, this woman must be able to cook. So I hear one of the story, her name is Pip, short for um, Epiphany. She is basically a spinster in her family. All of her sisters are younger and petite and small and she's kind of like built bigger and um, is very tall and no man has wanted her. Her parents are kind of like, mm, we, we can't find anybody. We've, we've, we've looked basically in the entire state and like no one wants you. I'm sorry. Like you're gonna, you're, you're not gonna have a husband. And um, she's like, oh uh, no. Um, but then she figures out that she can like answer these advertisements for a wife and she decides to say yes to Morgan McBride because she can cook. 
Um, she loves cooking, loves baking, but she doesn't know that <laughs> Morgan McBride did not put out the advertisement and it was his meddlesome younger sister. So she hasn't showed up yet or anything, but it's really fun so far. I'm really enjoying it. Um, the audiobooks are really great, but I'm going to listen to more of that uh, tomorrow. It's kind of like been my car ride book. Um, but I did get my computer back. I know I was talking about it the other day. I got my computer back finally today. And I look, I put the case on. I got this case for it. There's like a bottom piece too. I got this case for it. And it came with like this keypad thing too, which like this like rubber keypad, Sigma bobber. Um, that has like flowers on it as well. So I'm excited to use that. I also got like a pink sleeve to put it in when I like put it in my purse and stuff and when I take it off to work. So like I'm taking all the precautions with this. Like I cannot afford to have this thing break again because that was absolutely awful not having this computer for a week. I know that's like maybe ridiculous to some people, but like my life is on here. I couldn't do like any of my booktube stuff. I couldn't do a lot of stuff. It was broken, it was broken and I was devastated, but it's fixed now, I'm so happy. So I've been counting the days till I got this, but it will be taken care of like, like a newborn baby. Like I am not letting this thing out of my sight. <laughs> I also just filmed like a few videos, um, but it is Monday night. <laughs> it's Monday night, I had to film videos. Um, because I didn't have a few videos because I didn't have this bad boy with me because I needed it to do some stuff, to film stuff. Um, so now I have that so I was able to film some videos. So I need to edit them and one needs to go up in two days. So I need to do that. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to read some more historicals. I did just film my like series. I want to um, continue on with video. And one that I mentioned that I really want to like continue on with is Stacey Reed's series. Um, I think it's called like the Forever Your series. All of those are on Kindle Unlimited, if I'm not mistaken. And I really did enjoy book one because the heroine is visually impaired. Um, and there's like representation, I think, in a few of the books in the series. So I think I might pick one of those up. We'll see. Right now I'm currently reading a Casey Wells like werewolf shifter one that I'm like very intrigued with. So <laughs> I need to finish that one before I dive into another ebook. I finished the Morgan McBride one, book number two. I um, actually finished this a few days ago. And I I'm updating you now. But this one was just as cute and sweet as the first one. I will say both of these books, I feel like I wanted them to be longer because I wanted more development between the two. But like overall, I thought this was a great read. I love like the baking cooking element in it. Like it was really fun. The heroine was great. I really related to her because she is more of a curvier woman and Morgan loves every inch of her. So I love that, love to see that. Overall, I really enjoyed this one. And I would recommend it especially, I would recommend this series to people who aren't really that familiar with historicals, but want to get into them. I have started another historical. I love it. <laughs> I'm only like 25% of the way through it, but I love this book so far. This is The Bachelor's Bargain by, I think her name's Madison Michaels, if I'm not mistaken. This is like combining the Wallflower series kind of with the Lady Who Whistled Down element of Bridgerton. The heroine of this book has, I think, three other friends. So it's kind of like where like the wallflower aspect comes in because uh, they're both, they're all of them are kind of like on the outskirts of the ton. The heroine in this case, her reason for kind of being ostracized by people in the ton is because uh, she walks with a limp. She's, I think, a Duke's daughter. And um, she got in an accident when she was eight that uh, now she walks with a cane and she has a limp. In the beginning of the story, the heroine and her friends, her four friends, I think the series is gonna be about, um, they end up burying one of the friends that were also, that was also in the group. The heroine thinks that her death is a setup and she thinks that this man like ruined her and something happened where he got her killed. And so she decides to team up with her girlfriends and they are going to write this pamphlet, basically outing all of the horrible things that men in the ton have done. Okay, and the hero of the story is like, kind of like the scary guy of um, like London. Like he has a scar on his face, um, but he's very powerful. She has asked him to help fund her um, like little article newspaper thing. They get in like a deal that he'll help her if she helps her, his sister, his half sister become like an established lady. So there's a bunch of amazing things that I already love about this book. The banter, by the way, fan freaking tastic so far. I love it. I didn't even know going into this book that there was disability representation, but man, the way that it's going about already, she is so cool. She literally has a sword in her cane, in her mobility aid. Like she 
is like in the alleyways of London and she thinks someone's gonna come upon her and she like literally tells this person I have a weapon don't come any closer and she literally does she like like uncaps her cane and it's a it's a blade <laughs> it's like a sword like so cool but i really love her as a heroine so far i love like how determined she is to seek justice for her friend that has died i really love her attention with the hero right now they just had a conversation that was like great both of them have experienced discrimination from other people her because of her disability and he has a physical scar on his face and so they have kind of like been vulnerable in a moment they had a vulnerable moment and they were talking about their experiences and i was like hmm <gasps> I love it so far. I'm only 25% of the way through this, but so far it's like five star level. Okay, but I don't want to jinx it. So I don't know if I should have said that. Today is Saturday and it's going to be my last day for this vlog. I'm going to wrap it up here. I have read my last book for this historical romance reading vlog. Thank you so much, Jess, for asking me to be a part of this. Um, but I can't wait to watch everyone else's videos. Anyway, let me talk about my last book for this vlog, which was by far my favorite. I've already briefly mentioned The Bachelor Bargain by Madison Michaels before in my last clip, but this book is so good. I loved it so much. Five stars. I haven't read a historical romance that I've given like five stars to in a while. I think last year it was... I think the only one I maybe gave five stars to was the Scarlet Scott book that ended up on my favorites of the year. So I've been chopping at the bit to find a fantastic new historical book and I've never heard about this book before. I've never heard about this author before. I just found it on my Libby. I totally recommend just scrolling Libby one day. I, I do that all the time when I like watching a good show because I can never just sit and watch a show. My brain goes a million miles a minute. I cannot focus if I just sit and watch a show. I need to be doing something at the same time. So a lot of the time I will be scrolling either bookstagram, my Kindle Unlimited library, or my Libby app. Um, because man, this book sucked me in. I didn't even know going into this that this did have disability representation and it was done so well our heroine walks with a cane because she experienced an accident when she was eight i think i mentioned this in my last clip but um she now walks with a limp and she has this awesome cane that i talked about too she kind of reminded me of frankie of always only you by chloe lisa because she has like a cane she kind of like intimidates people with and that's what our heroine does our hero though i feel like is the first person to fully like embrace and understand and love her besides her friends obviously like the first man to ever be there for her when it comes to her disability and not judge her because of it because there are so many awful awful people men in the world when they see a mobility aid they go running for the hills and man he is there all in he doesn't see it as something to overcome he's like this is a part of the woman I love like this 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 cane is is part of the love of my life like I accept her no matter what and there's a few instances in here where the heroine ends up getting kidnapped or whatever the case may be I don't want to spoil it and these people take away her cane so she can't walk and this hero is pissed like he is pissed when he realizes like they've taken away the thing that helps her move it's definitely touch her and die like these men that took away her cane like <laughs> you gonna die dude like you're done there's another scene that i absolutely swooned over is throughout the book like the heroine goes to a few balls she's never danced at a ball before because number one no man has asked her and she just wouldn't feel comfortable at all she'd feel really embarrassed because she doesn't know how to dance because she can't like really move without her cane and throughout the book the heroes asked her to dance a few times and the heroine's like adamant like no I'm not doing it. And by the end of the book, one of the things he does to kind of like grovel for something that happened is to ask her to dance and to show her how to dance. Her way of accepting the apology is by accepting the dance and like dancing in front of the ton. And he's like, don't look at anyone else. You don't need to think about anyone else. You need to look at, I'm getting chills. Ugh. You don't need to look at anyone else. You don't need to think about anyone else in this room. Look at me. We're dancing. This is our moment. Those other people do not matter. Like. I think I found myself a new book boyfriend and a new all-time favorite heroine. I love both of them so much. There's also some side plots as well that I thought were really fun. I was not seeing the like other plot lines like coming really at all, um, which says a lot about how good this book is to me because I am a worry ward. I worry about everything and think about everything. And so I was like, oh, I did not see that coming. I did not see the like whodunit part of this book. 
at all. I totally recommend this book. I need more people to read it, please. I've already told a few of my friends about it and I was like, uh, you need to read this now. I really also wanna look into the other books in the series. I don't know how many there are. I think maybe they're like her girlfriends that are in here, like the other wallflowers are part of the series. This one came out in 2021. So I assume hopefully this already books out in the series that I need to look into. So that is the end of this vlog. I read three historical romances that I would totally recommend to people. Like I would recommend all three of these books. The first two, the ones by Amy Berry, I definitely would recommend to those who are not very seasoned in the historical romance genre and want to dip their toe in, um, or just want like a more contemporary flair to Westerns. Westerns kind of intimidate me. I haven't read a lot of them, um, and I don't see them as like, as entertaining as other historical romances that are out there. But I feel like these, these Westerns were so fun. They were so incredibly fun. So if you want to read a fun Western series, I totally recommend these. And then The Bachelor's Bargain, like new favorite it's one of my favorite books of the year so far like i know we're in january okay but this one huh it is so good i need a copy for my shelves i need to get it it is phenomenal i need more people to read it please i can't wait to see everyone else's vlogs and videos and to learn about the historicals they read and loved so i'm going to be spending my sunday watching all those videos i will be sure to link everyone who is also going to be doing this collab down below please go check all of them out let me know down below what your favorite historical romance is and if you've read any so far this year what's your favorite i would love to know and if you don't feel like commenting any of those things you can leave me a blue heart emoji in the comment section down below but anyways thank y'all so so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.